I always say now, like the biggest thing for me is just like, you can do whatever. And if it doesn't have a name, you can name it, then it becomes a trick. You're gonna notice that the stronger you are, the better you're gonna be able to do it. Then working out starts becoming fun. And I feel like the evolution of skiing style as well, it's like doing more of what feels good. What is up, guys? Welcome back to the Athletic Stance Podcast. On today's episode, we have a very special individual. He is recently coming off one of his first X Games medals in the Real Ski Urban Video Competition. Paul Hoagland, sorry for butchering your first name, also known as Payben, first released an edit in 2015, first went viral in 2015 by releasing a edit called Payben in the Park, and skiers all around the world lost their shit. Uh, he is a member of the amazing crew the bunch which are a very new school era style crew from europe and on top of his insane moves in the park and especially uh urban venues he is a very humble very light-hearted and inspiring individual we talked for almost three hours and i feel as if we could have just kept talking if he didn't have to grab some food i am very excited to bring to you this episode these episodes with par hoagland talking about fitness nutrition mindset anger creativity uh having fun and a whole lot more so without further ado mr par payben hagland my name is par hagland most people skiing know me as Paben. It's like a weird nickname that grew out of being in the U.S. And I don't really know. A lot of people had trouble saying Pad because it's like Swedish letters and rolling R's and all that. So Paben really stuck. So that's what most people know me as. And I'm out of a small town called Bolnas in Sweden, where I like grew up skiing. And uh, we had a like a tiny hill with like one lift and uh, and uh, like four slopes or something uh, but i grew up skiing there ski raced a lot on a pretty high level till i was 16 growing up with like mace like uh the prize ceremonies or whatever because i was in the park because you know i did my two runs the competition's over i go to the park and then my dad would like hunt me up and be like there's a prize ceremony there's like kids over there they didn't get a prize you got a prize and you better be there <laughs> like, damn like but i want to be here <laughs> yeah but uh yeah so that's how it started uh, with free skate for me pretty much yeah and and got tired of competing as i said and um, just kept on skiing but without the competitions yeah Totally. That's hilarious. Like your your dad's all like <laughs> yelling at you. Try like <laughs> obviously, you know, like you get a prize. It's it's respectable to show up. And yeah, I mean, you end up on the podium, and there's like kids there at the ceremony. They didn't even like get a prize, and you're like not there. It's like I don't know. I get that my dad got a little pissed at me because it's not. And that's not a lot of respect in that kind of. <laughs> yeah but, but it was same, fun in the park you know <laughs> yeah and you're like taking that passion for skiing and respecting the sport more than respecting the, <laughs> you know like you're respecting the, the overall sport yeah exactly yeah, yeah. that's funny yeah it's pretty hilarious Did i remember it. too like when i because uh, my dad was like he was my uh and uh, my coach too so he's like uh he's been a big big part of like my skiing growing up which is like it was really good but it's also like when you're it, when you're 
getting a little older and it's getting a little more serious and you're like you know you fight with your parents sometimes but you wouldn't really fight with your coach yeah but when your coach is your parent it's like you can fight with your coach yeah <laughs> and it's not a like ideal scenario sometimes but most of the times it was an ideal scenario he helped me a lot with my skiing and i have this memory when i was like 16 i was starting in sweden we call it gymnasium it's like pretty much like high school i guess i looked at this uh, school like in kiruna which is like the northernmost town in sweden super far north and they had like a free ski uh thing going on there they were just starting it up and i would be like the first in the first class i was like shit you know this is like thinking about it like do i really want to ski race or like should i maybe do this and then i like started talking to my mom because i was like kind of afraid of like talking to my dad about it because yeah. i was not because he was like angry or strict or anything but it's just like his like my whole life was ski racing so like his whole life was like all of his friends were the people he would meet at competitions and on like camps and stuff and like those were his friends that was like parents of my friends skiing and he was like now i'm gonna take that away from him you know yeah and it's like pretty pretty big deal for me you know in my head yeah and i just remember like going into my parents bedroom and i was just like dad like you know like i've been thinking about this and i'm like a little nervous telling you and i just like told him and he just like started laughing just like you serious you nervous about telling me this like <laughs> of course you should do that yeah and it was just like it, so easy kind of and so i did that's awesome yeah, yeah it's so funny how like we play these things up in our heads sometimes like yeah. the conversation or sometimes even like the trick that we're thinking about and then like you know you go out and you try it or you go out and you have that conversation and oftentimes you make it such a bigger deal than it actually is oh, yeah for real it's funny i like that saying i hate i hate when uh, i hate when i plan a conversation in my head and the other guy doesn't stick to the script <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's a good that's a really good, that's hilarious yeah uh, that's so funny <laughs> because you do you play it out like especially certain personality types they play out these you know conversations in their head so much and then all of a sudden like the first first line you're off <laughs> yeah. like well, that's not how what i thought I this now? is gonna go <laughs> so was your dad a ski racer is that yeah okay yeah yeah he was a ski racer i have i grew up with two older sisters they were both ski racing like we were a big ski racing family kind of my mom skis as well she never ski raced but she uh she skis yeah because we ski kind of <laughs> yeah totally yeah. how old are your sisters uh they're seven and five or wait yeah five and seven years older than me so they're 31 and 33 yeah yeah i got kids and stuff now so yep we got a got a big family going now nice yeah yeah yeah, I've got an older sister for three and a half years older than me. And yeah. um yeah, it was awesome. You know, going up ski races together, at least when we were younger, and then as you know, we hit these different age groups, like she would be off with my mom at some one race and I'd be off with my dad at another race, and then sometimes we'd have races together. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. I think that's like part of my my uh, progression as a skier when i was younger too because i would always like hang out with my sisters and their friends yep and they were all older skiers and i've always been like skiing with older people kind of yeah and i think that's like you should always surround yourself with people that are better than you at things kind of yeah it's, it's gonna help a lot for sure Totally. And you get that belief of what's possible when you see it firsthand, you yeah. know, like, yeah. you know, when you, when I first saw, you know, some tricks in person, it like, it just adds a whole new level of like, oh, that's not just something that I'm watching on TV or, you know, something. Yeah, in the yeah. movies. For that's, real. Yeah. And that's like how it was when I, when I then actually moved to Kirana to go to that school. 
we uh i met up with like uh you know magnus granier and lucas and jens and all the bunch homies yeah pretty much we and they were like i was like down here you know and they were like way above my uh, uh skill level kind of at free skiing or like doing tricks on rails and doing tricks in, in the air and stuff i was a really good skier but didn't yeah. have those tricks kind of but they always like you know treated me like i was as good as them yeah but i wasn't but then at a certain point you start like catching up or you start like thinking if you think you're better than you are then you're gonna be better than you are kind of. yeah totally it's pretty sick that's awesome so is that where the bunch was kind of where it all formed was at it, that school yeah pretty much for sure we like met we had a, a guy called uh tobias johansson he was at the same school but he wasn't skiing but he had been filming skiing before yeah and so he started filming us and then we started filming each other and we made this like big edit that we released and it caught on and like a lot of people saw it and then we just like kept on doing it kind of yeah and that like became the bunch and then it's just like now i feel like it's a very floating thing it's just like anyone who skis you know the bunch is like it's not this group of people it's like it's like a bigger thing kind of it's just like out there pretty much yeah anyone anyone can be a part of it pretty much yeah totally it's like more of a, a movement than like a, a group of people or yeah yeah for real love it yeah it's awesome it's crazy how the world kind of like you you get put in the right place at the right time and then like the the magic that comes especially out of a group of like-minded individuals is yeah uh is there any like one person that was like the the main like hey we should do this or was it just kind of like this thing that evolved without you know no that's like yeah it there was just like it just happened with all of us kind of yeah i don't know every all of us were like really into skiing and watching ski movies and stuff and yeah all of us were like so hyped on skiing and on filming and it just like i don't know it just happened very naturally kind of and then because the Swedish ski scene isn't very big. So it's like if you're skiing a lot and you become like you want to ski a lot, you're going to meet all the other people that are like minded kind of when second year in that school, we just like started meeting more people from Sweden that were thinking the same way we were. And then it really became the bunch kind of when more people joined in, we started going on trips together and yeah what's it like to grow up in sweden like you've done some traveling all over the the world now and and you know i think traveling and experiencing different cultures a is one of the most amazing things that you get to experience as a skier because like when you experience other cultures you realize how similar other people are but there's also very distinct differences in like cultural routines so was it like obviously you you grew up in sweden you didn't grow up in the us but what would you propose the difference is like what's it like to grow up in sweden and then what's the cultural differences that you like have noticed about everything i think that uh, travel the more i travel the more i enjoy sweden kind of yeah it's pretty crazy and also like it makes me realize because sweden it's been like a socialist country for a pretty long time or a really long time and we have like we pay a lot of taxes but we ha- everyone has free health care and all that stuff free schools like everything is like free because you're paying tax but like everyone has the ability to like educate themselves and like get health care if they get sick and everything and that's like for me i think the thing i've gotten to appreciate the most growing up and like traveling i don't know i I just like witnessed a car crash in another country my first reaction was like we need to call the ambulance you know yeah and then just hearing people saying like 
no, we should check it out first and see if they need it. Because if they don't need it and you call the ambulance or whatever, you know, it's just like there's a lot of money involved. Yeah. And just like stuff like that is to me, it was like, whoa, like, is that really a thing? Do like, do you guys need to think about that kind of? Yeah. And that like stuff like that is like so nice coming from Sweden because everyone has a lot of good opportunities pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot, there's a lot of safety growing up in Sweden, I feel like. But other than that, more like cultural and with people, it's like we're pretty to ourselves, you know? Yeah. Swedish people doesn't talk very much, especially to strangers. It's like one of those things like taking the bus in Sweden. Every, you, you come into the bus and let's say there's like 100 seats in the bus and there's 50 people. No one's going to sit next to anyone else because everyone is just like have their own two seat, you know? Mm-hmm. And then you get to like, we would be traveling to Colorado and you get on the ski bus and like people want to sit next to each other and talk to each other. Yeah. Even if you don't know the person, it's just like, you want to, you want to socialize kind of. Yep. And that's like what I really love about like going to the U S for example, because people are more open. Totally. Yeah. That's interesting. Like, you know, being a uh, socialist and having the access where it is more of a we thing where like, you know, you're paying taxes so that everyone has the opportunity to educate themselves. Everyone has the opportunity for healthcare, but yet you like less socialization. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It is pretty funny when you think about it like that. Like, yeah, for real. Um, and it's uh, the like cultural wise. I love going to Russia. I've been to Russia like four years straight now, I think. And like, that's one of my favorite, like cultural experiences kind of, because it's like, you have so, uh, so many, I always forget this word, but it's like, when you think something without knowing before, you know, you know, you have like uh, preconceived uh, notions Mm -hmm. about people and like about the country kind of. And then you go there and it's like, especially like younger people, you meet younger people in Russia and it's like, it's the internet generation. Yeah. It's like, they see the same memes we see, you know? Yeah. (laughs) So it's just like, you know, they look at the same funny cats on YouTube. It's just like, (laughs) (laughs) it's not, it's not like, and of course they have Putin and like the, the system's corrupt and all that. But when you actually meet people and you start talking to people, it's just like, well, you're people too. So yeah. that was like, I had so many preconceived thoughts about how Russia would be. And then I go there and just like, oh, okay. Yeah. It's like people are people here too. It's not, it's not a big deal kind of. Yeah, totally. <laughs> were, were you there on ski trips? Yeah. All ski trips. We had a crazy, that's, that's a crazy story. Actually, we had uh, uh, the first time going to Russia, we, went to moscow Mm -hmm. and we drove there from sweden so we took the boat over to finland and then drove through finland into russia and then drove for it was a long ass drive but we drove all the way and we had like two cars and plenty of people so we just like sleep in the back seat and then switch drivers and keep going and in the middle of the woods there's like nothing there's just a road and woods and we've been driving for so long there's nothing out there and We just start seeing these sheds that are like lit up. Just like we pass one and she's like, well, what was that? And then we just like pass another one. She's like, are those teddy bears in there? (laughs) And she's like, what the? And it was pass another one and another one. And they were like, they were not in like cities or like in not even in like communities. It was just like on their own on the next, like on the side of the road. And they also had like this blue lit up liquids and big gas bottles kind of and we're like what is that like we gotta stop at one of those then we stop and this was like 3 a.m in the morning and we just stop and then there's uh (laughs) there's like the blue liquid was like a windshield liquid uh and uh so it wasn't that weird but then the teddy bears it was literally like teddy bears in all sizes like from this big to like huge ones and we're just like what is this and they're they're like all lit up and everything and we just like walk in there 
And this super old Russian lady comes out of another shed right next to it. She just starts pointing and stuff. And at first we were like, and this is like 3 a.m. in the morning, in the middle of the woods in Russia. (laughs) What is going on? And at first it's like pretty fun. And it's just like, it's pretty funny. You're just like, yeah, yeah, we should buy one. And then we bought one. And then you just like stay there and just start getting creepy, you know? Yeah. It's just like, like what? Like nothing makes sense. So you're just like, it started off funny, but then everyone starts looking at each other. Like, is someone going to jump us now? Or (laughs) what is this stuff? (laughs) And then we just like got a teddy bear, got in the car and kept driving past a couple more of those. And then a couple hours later, we get to Moscow. And we start asking people about it and no one seems to know like what it is and why. And then it just got really weird <laughs> because like we still don't know like what was that and why was it there. That's so weird. Yeah, it's insane. The ultimate mystery. Yeah, it is. And it still is a mystery. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I want like... uh you almost got to do like a, a little vlog about like, <laughs> I mean, uh, you, who knows if you want to go back, but like document that, you know, like that experience. So that's got to be crazy because the language barrier too, right? Like, yeah, couldn't ask anyone about it like <laughs> around there. And then as soon as we got out of it, no one knew. Yeah. Pretty crazy. And that's like, that's my favorite thing when traveling to, and especially traveling to like places that are not, as alike as like the like Sweden and you the US are like pretty similar in ways you know it's just like everything is like pretty well developed and all of that and then you go to pretty much nowhere in Russia and it's like way different and that's like that's my favorite part about traveling for sure yeah teddy bears <laughs> windshield wiper fluid <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh. Now you got me all curious about that. <laughs> yeah. If someone hears this and knows what it is and why, please give me a call or send me an email or something because I need to know. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, I might have to do a little research. I don't know if I know anyone. I think I have some Instagram followers from Russia. Maybe maybe they'll uh, chime in. Maybe they'll listen. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully. Have you been, uh, you've been traveling a lot outside of the U.S.? Yeah, I've been very fortunate to do a lot of traveling and not just with skiing, but it was something that my parents highly encouraged. And so we, you know, we traveled quite a bit. My dad has MS. And so one of the things that he uh, was able to do that we were able to do together was scuba diving. Oh, and scuba diving is awesome. And, um, you know, with having MS, uh, like he can get very fatigued and have trouble with temperature regulation. And so, uh, you know, under, underwater gravity doesn't exist as much. And the temperature is, you know, it's generally like in the right climates, you have like this really nice temperature water. So, um, you know, he struggles with overheating. So I've been able to travel several places with him there. And Damn. it's been incredible. We got to go to like Guam. Where's that? It's basically halfway in between Japan and Hawaii ish. Oh, okay. Okay. Kind of out in um, Micronesia is the Micronesian islands. And, yeah. um, and then also Yap and Chuk. And those are just, you know, three islands that are out there. It's like halfway in between Japan and Hawaii, but 10 degrees below the equator. Oh, okay. And I've been yeah, to That Ch- sounds so sick. It is incredible. That is so, that is so crazy that it, there's like, with your dad having MS, and then there's just like this perfect thing for him to do and for you guys to do it together. It's just like awesome. Totally. Yeah. I feel super fortunate about like, you know, my dad being so supportive of me growing up ski racing, taking me to Mount Hood, spending so much time there. And then also like they were not selfish at all when it came, when it comes to traveling, uh, any sort of vacation was very much 
family vacation where, yeah. you know, we got to go to Hawaii. We got to go to Cozumel uh, and do scuba diving there. My dad and I went to Belize and um, got a scuba dive there and the Cayman Islands. And like my parents were, they worked hard to spend money on travel, not necessarily yeah. on like nice cars or nice clothes or, yeah. or nice watch, you know, it was like, we're going to work hard for the experiences. And that's, you know, I think that that's really, I feel so lucky for that. And then as far as skiing goes, you know, I've been able to ski in like Chile and Argentina and Austria um, and Whistler and, you know, like places in Canada. And so I, it's one of those things, the more that you see of the world and the more cultures you get to experience, like you just realize like how small of a world it really is in a lot of ways, because people, like you said, like there are those cultural differences, but you, you know, you just have those places where you're like, oh, it's just another person, you know, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're seeing the for same real. internet memes we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, <for> yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. And I feel like too traveling it's like the more you see the more you want to see kind of mm -hmm. just like tingles your uh, traveling nerves and it's just like oh i get to see this i want to see more yeah totally yeah because then when you're traveling you generally meet other people who are traveling too and and they're from a oh, different yeah. area and then they tell you about some amazing spot that of where they're from or what they've seen and then you're all of a sudden you're like oh i need to see that yeah <laughs> yeah for real yeah but uh um, what's your uh, what's your uh, favorite if you had to pick like a favorite area that you uh, visited <sighs> like it could be either human wise or like people wise or like nature wise or whatever man that's super tough i would say probably chile like yeah i went down there for it was supposed to be a competition the snow wasn't very good, but everyone had already bought tickets. So the North Face put us all like, it was like 60 of us on two big stagecoach buses. And we went down 14 hours south to the Patagonias to this small little resort called Antionca. And that's when I met Ian McIntosh, Hugo Harrison. You know, we were just like skiing around on this volcano, a bunch of skiers that were all pretty much from the US, but then there were also, there's a small group that was from Chile that really yeah. like taught us about the culture. And, and um, you know, it was just like, A, it was a shit show. We were getting like, we got, it was literally, there was a group blackout <laughs> on the bus on the way down. And like all 40 of us barely remember anything that happened on that bus. <laughs> We showed up at this, uh, I remember being at this gas station and Ian McIntosh had uh, convinced everyone to take their shirts off. Um, yeah. and, like we all get off the bus and half the women like walk into the gas station just in their sports bras. And stuff. <laughs> like, we're like shirtless and everyone needs food at that point because like the alcohol consumption level is just way too high <laughs> and uh we get off the bus and the bus is just like not inhabitable anymore <laughs> like yeah. like there was people had puked on it there are some things that had happened on that bus that yeah. are uh unspeakable <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds like uh that sounds like an amazing trip yeah but then after we got out you know the trip we did filming and Drew Tadkey was there as well. There were, you know, skiing around with a bunch of amazing people and we didn't get a film as much as we wanted to because of the weather and everything. But, you know, we got to like, there's this little wood fired hot tub that everyone spent time in. And literally it was like big enough for like 10 people. And we had like 25 in it most <laughs> of the time. And then they had this little discotheque that we would like rage at until like two or three in the morning and then you know wake up at you know six thirty seven, go get breakfast and then go sweat it all out hiking up the <laughs> volcano and oh it was that was That's an awesome. experience for sure and then after we were done with the trip 
uh, we ended up, I ended up extending my trip for another like two or three weeks and staying with one of the guys from Chile that had been on the trip and then learned a ton about the culture, met a bunch of people. They had like this system of, we were like, we would, uh, we basically had like two passes for like eight of us. And <laughs> we would cycle the passes and then get up on, like further onto the mountain somewhat, you know, would cycle it back. And then we'd all kind of like gather in one area and in Fariones or, you know, there's three, Fariones is the town and then there's three ski areas that are near it. And all of the ski areas, you can kind of, you can ski in between all of them. So, um, yeah. you're not, you're not supposed to, but you can, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. uh, so you can ski like. La Parva, El Colorado, and Valle Nevado. And I had been to Valle Nevado before for ski racing camps, but I never got the chance to like shred the park. I ended up skiing in a park competition for my first time. Nice. Got like fourth. I learned Misty Nines in that comp. <laughs> um, and yeah, it was just like that was probably like one of the most incredible experiences all around between people being so high up in the, in the Andes mountains. And then just like the experience and like everything that, that came along with that. It was unforgettable besides the the group blackout. No one remembers that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That sounds amazing, man. But what about you? Yeah. I've never been to, to South America. Would love to at some point. But I think my favorite nature-wise and maybe people-wise too is uh, going to Oregon, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like that was – we start like my first trip to the U.S. My first two trips to the U.S. was to Colorado. And just like being there, skiing, Brett, Keystone, all that, just like lap in the park. Yep. You know, getting into it. And then – I think it was maybe the second one or the third one. We drove out to uh, Oregon, and it's just amazing. Because I like grew up in the woods in Sweden, and it's like I really like being in the in the woods. And then you come there, and it's just like you get in, like you drove you drive up the coast, and you start like at the like end of California kind of you start seeing all these huge trees and then it's just like you get into Oregon and it's beautiful it's just I don't know amazing like yeah. just walking around in the forest being like whoa like where am I yeah and it was crazy to me like those trees because it's like you look straight up and it kind of looks like Sweden you know they're like pretty similar kind of trees and you yeah. look up and like the trees are meeting in there and it looks pretty much the same. And then you look down and you realize there's like so much space in between the trees because the trees are huge, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, whoa. And that's like, I think my favorite. And I've gone back to Oregon a bunch of times and every time it's like, wow, this is amazing. Yeah, totally. And coming from Sweden too, like hanging out with a bunch of american people is like a really nice change of pace and like like just socializing and stuff and it's yeah that's probably my favorite yeah and then russia russia for sure is a favorite too just because it's pretty weird and nice you know (laughs) (laughs) teddy bears and and windshield wiper fluid (laughs) oh yeah oh yeah yeah no i did forest service work in washington for a summer and so I was literally hiking around for, I'd be out for five days at a time and then back for two and then out for five and was backpacking, just like making sure that the backpackers out on these loops were uh, like adhering to the law and, you know, that they were safe and everything. And uh, man, the trees out there, like Washington, Oregon, that, yeah, it's incredible. Like some of them are just so massive like you couldn't really even conceive that they're that big you know and it's crazy there's something about that like humid air the smell the like you know just everything that goes along with that vibe there's just something about it yeah it's so crazy i always tell like because a lot of people from sweden because we watch like a lot of like like movies and music and everything is from the u.s so it's like a big deal for a lot of Swedish people going to the U.S. 
Yeah. It's like you want to go and see what's there kind of because you see all the movies and you see like hear all the music and all that. And then you just want to go and actually see it. And a lot of people will be like, so where are you going? It's just like, yeah, to New York City. And I'm like, oh, yeah, but you should go to Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> he's like where are you going out and go to la just like yeah rent the car and go up to oregon go north. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's funny because i mean i would assume that oregon isn't like if you're in the ski world you know that mount hood is in oregon and yeah everything and like maybe if you understand like or if you watch like uh hipster culture kind of sort of thing like you might know about portland like portlandia and stuff like that yeah. but Oregon's not necessarily a spot that I think you would hear a lot about. No, not at all. Yeah. No, it's not. And yeah, that's pretty nice. Like Portland is also like, it's more similar to Sweden maybe in a way too. Cause like Sweden is really, I don't know, really hipster kind of, especially yeah. like now living in Stockholm. It's like <laughs> everyone is like, I guess it's all, all like, if you go to New York city too, it's like people dress way different. Like everyone just like are like, no one really cares how you look. You just want to look like not someone else kind of, or whatever, <laughs> you know? Yep. That's uh, I like Portland in that way too. Yeah. Portland. There's a lot of interesting style that comes out of Portland. <laughs> That's for sure. Especially like, uh, the grunge culture, like, uh, <laughs> yeah that's crazy i went to berlin i'd been to berlin in germany before when i was younger but this summer one of my friends were doing an internship in berlin so we went and visited her with a bunch of people and it was crazy because like berlin is just on another level it's like everything like everyone is so like everything's accepted kind of in a way so you'd be like in the nicest places or whatever and there'd be like people looking like something you've never seen before and no one even turns their heads you know yeah because it's just like everyone is so just just accepts everything so it's like no one cares everyone just does themselves as much as they want and no one will care and yeah. it's that was really cool actually berlin is a really cool place to visit too Cool. Yeah, I'll definitely have to keep that in mind because I'm trying to make a trip over to Europe in the next, you know, couple of years to be able to experience more culture. I was there when I uh, like flew into Munich and then we went to Austria twice when I was like 16, 17 for skiing. Yeah. But now that I'm older, I would love to, you don't notice as many things when you're younger. I feel like yeah. you're like, focused on on what you're there for and it's hard to really experience the culture the party scene in uh in berlin is uh, off the hooks too <laughs> yeah it's really really crazy yeah totally. it's just like clubs clubs open up on friday afternoon and they stay open until monday morning and just like the best the actual best time to go out is like sunday midday or sunday afternoon yeah because that's when the locals are out kind of yeah they start like saturday morning or like the morning of the sunday and then just like keeps on going till monday morning kind of <laughs> that's insane. crazy yeah what's the music culture like you said that a lot of the music in sweden is uh from the u.s do you guys have like a big you know europe uh was has like the huge trance culture I think Berlin, like Sensation White was, uh, I think, in Berlin. Um, yeah, probably. I'm not sure, but sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah, it is. It's been like in Sweet Sweden has been like really, really influenced by the US, I think, in uh, like music wise and, and like popular culture wise, I, I guess. But now I feel like more and more artists are like taking pride in being from Sweden. Yep. And like, like hip hop, for example, like people are really experimenting and like doing a lot of new stuff and like doing stuff that you haven't heard from the US before, you know, mm -hmm. like before it was just like you would hear like boom bap hip hop and then people would just try to imitate it. But in Swedish, you know, 
yeah. and it worked because that's what people did, you know? Yep. And then now I feel like overall too, like hip hop, especially has just like grown into this huge thing where people go in like all different directions. Yeah. And, uh, and, that, and that's like really cool because now people are more like daring to, to like do their own thing or like try new stuff kind of. Yeah. So I think more and more like we're, we're creating our own popular culture, I guess. Yeah. But still, for sure, there's a lot of like all pretty much all movies and stuff I see is usually from the US, you know, the it's huge. Yeah. Like uh, movie production and stuff. Everyone's got Netflix, you know. Yeah, totally. Uh, Do you guys have Hulu? I don't yeah. think so. Okay. Hulu is like that? the, like a competitor to Netflix and they've oh, got, okay. you know, how like Netflix has their own original series now. Yep, yep. Um, like Hulu has their own original series stuff as well. And they're kind of a competitor. Like there's overlap in like some of the TV shows and movies that end up on both of them, but then yep. they each have their own original stuff as well. I think that's a, like a good segue talking about style and adopting unique style. You have your own really unique style in skiing that has like created, you've created your own space and your own niche by like being unique and different. And I think the bunch has been really good at that. Just like real ski fee, ski yeah. Finland, you know, like they've been really good at creating their own style. So like how, where does your style come from and where, you know, like how has that evolved? Personally, I'd say for me, it's a lot because when I, like coming back to that talking about the school we went to where kind of the bunch started like when i started there we had this rail i keep telling this story my friends are probably really tired of it but it's just like we have this we had this rail on the schoolyard and we would just go on and go out on the lunch break or whatever and ski it and people were like most of the people there were like trying to do all eights and like doing all eights on like fewer and fewer tries and everything. And that's when I learned how to do a frontside switch up my first time, you know, at the same time as uh, all the other people were trying to do all eight. And then that kind of was like, I just like got to a place where like, I'm never going to catch up. Yeah. You know, I'm never going to catch up with these guys. So I'm just like, I might as well not try to catch up. Mm -hmm. And then just started trying to do, I don't know, stuff that I thought was fun. And since I was skiing a lot, like I was a good skier on snow. So I just started more and more staying on snow and like doing more butters and, and all that stuff. And I feel like the biggest, uh, the biggest influence on my personal style is for sure. Mike Hornbeck. Yeah. Cause I remember the, the, I think it's in the, it's called like MN edit or something, Minnesota edit mm -hmm. uh, with Hornbeck. And there's a shot of him doing coming over a knuckle, doing like the nolly, like nolly shifting the skis to a tail drag to mm -hmm. switch. Yeah. And I just saw that, that specific shot and it just like stuck so hard. And I started doing that like all the time, all the time. And it's just like, how can I do that in another way or another way? And then everyone, who was in that school were like really, I don't know, trying to do new stuff. Yeah. And then we all fed off each other so much. Yeah. And then, yeah, that's pretty much, I feel like we had our own little thing, you know, where like, we were like, someone would try something or like fail almost. And then someone else would see that and wouldn't see it as a fail, but like a new trick, you know? And then yeah. we'd actually start trying what that person wasn't even trying. Yeah. And then, then, yeah. And then it go comes back and everyone just feeds off each other really, really well kind of. So that's how it, how it, how it was. And then when you're, I feel like when you're starting to do n like new stuff, then you like start to, we started to like compare, you just compare or, and not even compare, but just like, we weren't really looking at what other people was doing because you've seen it before. Yeah. And then you just start looking at your friends because 
like they were doing something that you haven't seen before and yep. then you want to do something that they haven't seen before and then it's just like you start doing like new stuff all the time yeah and i feel like that's how like the whole bunch thing just like started no i mean i think that when you compare yourself or when you're looking outside yeah you just kind of become a part of the you know the box that is already out there instead of you know like if you just don't look at the box you can't be in the box <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly yeah yeah for sure uh did you guys like i feel like you have like a skateboarding style do you did you skateboard growing up or did you guys watch skateboarding movies at all or yeah for sure like i was skateboarding a lot i kind yeah. of uh have an in the past like i always try to skateboard as much as possible but i used to skateboard a lot a lot when i was younger for sure yeah. and i feel like a lot of people in the bunch overall were skateboarding and always looking at like skateboarding and snowboarding and i feel like we were kind of i i was we were all looking a lot at ski movies for sure but we, we were also looking a lot at snowboarding yep and just like snowboarders were like I would look at Hard to Earn, you know, the Tech Nine movie with uh, Mark Frank Montoya and Lucas Magoon, mm -hmm. and they were like, "There's a shot of MFM doing like a butter thing, just like bring back whatever," and it's just like, "Whoa, like that's so sick! I want to do that," you know? Yeah. And no one was really doing those crazy things on skis yet, so we were all like really influenced by by not looking at skiing, kind of. Yeah, totally. Sure. I love that. And I think it's, you know, it's created a whole new ecosystem within skiing where there is now a complete culture around that like new new school style of skiing and it's less focused on who can do the triple 16 or whatever yeah. and more on like having fun and being creative and how do you make something just a little bit different and then it's completely new i always say now like the biggest thing for me is just like you can do whatever and if it doesn't have a name you can name it and then it becomes a trick yeah you know you're just like i do a i don't know a carb to the right and put my left hand behind my back in the snow instead of putting my right hand on the snow and then i call it something the rapper and you i don't know you know just like the rapper that was really bad sorry about that everyone <laughs> but you know you just like do something and then you call it something and all of a sudden since you're calling it something then you can build onto it you know yeah. so you say you do a front side switch up then you can do a front side switch up 270 out yeah but what if you would do like you slide sideways and just like sliding sideways on the snow, now I call that a Tokyo drift. And now you can do a Tokyo drift off something and you can do a Tokyo drift 270. Yeah. And you know, and then all of a sudden there's a new world because now you can do, when you start calling it something, it becomes a real thing kind of. Yeah, totally. And that's, uh, that's uh, like a big thing, I think, because we have a lot of names for stuff that like doesn't like no one's heard it or like <laughs> it isn't even a trick you know but we call it something and then you can do it and add on to it kind of yeah and it makes it more fun because then like you have your own your own language and your own culture and it's like you get to communicate with your friends in a way where like it doesn't it's like almost like a secret language where like you know you get to like communicate with them i remember growing up hanging around the neighborhood with a bunch of kids and we would always hang out at this local gas station and we were just like we would lurk there it was like we called it lurking <laughs> lurking at the yeah. gas station <laughs> and like we'd be there and like we would try stuff on bikes and we would try you know like it was it wasn't just specific to bikes or or skateboarding or whatever but we kind of created our own language where like i remember we had this and this is like so stupid but hilarious at the same time we had this there's like a little uh a, like a shelves of treats and they were all made by little debbie so it was like the like little you know little debbie cake rolls and like everything oh, yeah, yeah. and we called it like little debbieing it was how many little debbie snacks <laughs> you can fit in your mouth at the same time <laughs> and like 
for whatever reason that became a thing and it's like yeah, yeah. you know it's like it's so stupid but so awesome at the same time because for it's real. Like, it's this magical world that you create just by labeling something and then like you know you, yeah exactly you get to build off of it yeah yeah it's uh, yeah it's crazy i think a lot of people are so stuck to like boundaries kind of yeah you know and oh, yeah. always looking at stuff that already have a name yep but i think creating names in a way is what's what's fun <laughs> yeah totally yeah i remember also like watching uh like Robin Big, I think it was Robin Big, like they were doing like 540 flips and stuff like that, but they would call it like the grape flip and yeah. stuff like that. And it just like, it adds this whole new element of like, you just like smile when you say it instead of like, oh, you know, like that hardcore, like we were talking about like early 2000s, mid 2000s of like, I'm doing a dub core or I'm doing a kangaroo flip or whatever, you know, like yeah, it's yeah, cool, yeah. The, the kangaroo flip, but like, you know, like dub core, nine you know like cool yeah. dub cork nine tail like that's that's cool and all but like when you call it something different and you label it like it brings a smile which then brings a whole new vibe and and it like yeah it allows for an evolution even if it's just an evolution of like the name and yeah everything yeah yeah involved sure, in that sure. hey just one more thing before you go i wanted to say thank you so much for listening to today's episode i hope that you really enjoyed it a uh, couple things that i would ask that you do if you enjoyed today's episode number one go follow us on instagram at the athletic stance podcast number two if you don't mind leaving a review rating it and subscribing it always helps. It helps spread the word. It helps me know what you guys are enjoying or not. And if you don't mind leaving a comment on Instagram, letting me know what you're enjoying, what you're not enjoying, I will always take into consideration and feel free to send me a message with recommendations on who you'd like to hear from, what you'd like to hear us talk about. And as always, thank you so much for listening, for your time, and we'll see you next time at the Athletic Stance Podcast.